Stonehenge, they've been studying Stonehenge for 300 years, and roughly that 300 years, a few people have speculated that there's an alignment to the summer solstice sunrise along the axis of the Stonehenge circle. And it, the, the calendar in Stonehenge goes in and out of favor amongst the experts over there. Around 1900, the experts thought that there is a calendar, a very crude one, but still it marked the winter solstice sunset and the summer solstice sunrise. By 1970, the <laughs> expert archaeologists decided that, oh, those old people didn't know anything, they're wrong, there's no calendar there. When we discovered the calendar in the Sun Temple in Alberta, after we more or less nailed it down here, I heard about the arguments that had been going on for 300 years about Stonehenge. So I decided to take the techniques that we had evolved here to Stonehenge to have a, a proper look at it because all the experts had stood in the middle of Stonehenge Circle and looked through the wide gaps between the big stones to uh, see if there could be an alignment there that meant anything. Well, the lines here in Alberta were accurate to a twentieth of a degree. The experts in, in England thought that the uh, old folks 4,000 years ago, the best they could do was about one or two degrees. So this is wrong by a factor of 20 to 40. Well, we went there in December 1995 and began our study. Then we kept going there until 2010. So anyway, to introduce Stonehenge, this is a, an attempt to measure the summer solstice sunrise and we had bad luck because there's clouds on the ground. We couldn't see any sun. Oh, I didn't say. People were standing in the middle of the circle looking up between these big vertical stones, big gaps. The actual observation place is a barrel 300 meters southwest of the circle, a long way away. You have to look through a narrow hole in the Stonehenge structure. Some of the stones have fallen down, so it turns out the narrow hole has to be reconstructed. Anyway, sunrise, 17th of June, 1999. You're not always lucky because there's a lot of cloud in England. So anyway, this is where the sun rose on the 17th of June. To get the horizon is about this level. This is uphill. There were no trees 4,000 years ago, so you have to extrapolate this sun, top of the sun, back to the horizon. Just to show that you can accurately get the slope. These, this is uh, three subsequent times after that initial. So this is the slope that you have to extrapolate that point back. When you do that, for the 17th of June, you get this, the white dashed line is the horizon before, there were, before the trees grew. This heavy line is the 17th of June. You have to extrapolate that. This, the sun moves very regularly, so you can, you know how much it, the rise point changes each day, and the uh, spinning axis of the Earth uh, precesses, and so over a thousand years, the rise point at the solstices shifts a little bit. Four thousand years ago, it shifted by 0.93 degrees. So to go from 1999 to 4,000 years ago, this is four kilo years, thousand years before the present. That means ago. And we extrapolate that down, it comes to this is the remaining great trilithon stone. The fallen one is, is, is right here on the ground. You just 
draw it as if it were standing up and then put on the, the top, the lintel. This extrapolates down to this point in the gap of the great trilithon. The ground here is here, so the, the sun is rising in a heavy stone window four meters above the ground. I mean, that's magical. They built this structure. It took genius. I only did that to illustrate that there is a calendar. That's the one that has been argued over for 300 years. So we saw that it's a very accurate one. And it's accurate to a tenth of a degree. The, the, it's not as, quite as accurate as the one here because the stones are big and the gaps are a little bigger. So this is the summer solstice sunrise line that I showed there. This is an aerial view taken from a postcard. And so the, it's high, it goes high past this great trilithon, and it goes above the circle at this point. So that's, that's this sunrise line in, the, in summer solstice. What I'm going to show in some detail is the equal day night sunset line and this equal day night sunrise line. A kilometer away, there is a ridge with six, what they call, bowl barrels on. A lot of these barrels have burials in them, but nobody knows whether there are bur burials in these or not. But anyway, it's a ridge with six of them, 27, 28, 29, 30, over here there are three more. So the equal day night sun rise, I will show you, is into the peak of King Barrow uh, 28. Well first I'm going to show you the set sunset line. This is a Google Earth image of the circle and the for the sunset you just stand on the on the bank east of the circle and you look through a very narrow gap which I will show you there is a notch out of one of these trilithon stones that lets, this, lets the light through I'll show that to you This is standing out just outside the circle. This is one of the tri circle trilithons. There's another one over here. And this is 25 meters across the circle. This is a, a trilithon. Trilithon just means three big stones, three stones. Two standing vertically here and then one on top. But there's a notch been carved out of the side of this one to let the sun light through when the sun is setting on the equal day night. If you move to the east bank, where the observer would have stood, this is the tiny slot where the sun has to appear to make the accurate measurement. So the line is quite accurate, but still only about a tenth of a degree. To show you actual results, I move the camera inside the circle, not too far from that carved chunk out of that rock, to show you an equal day-night leap year cycle. This is the 25th and the 26th of September. And so the start of the equal day-night was here, and the end of it was here, coming this way. This is north, this is south, if you're looking west. We move the camera back a little bit to narrow that gap. We see just the set on the 26th. In the last two years of the cycle, 8, 9, 10, 11, this is divided by 4, 
and these are not. So this is the leap year. And so this is the last two years of a leap year cycle. It ends in September. If you do it in March, it's going the other way. This is the start of the equal day night in March. So what it picks is the start in March and the end in September. We move the camera still farther away to narrow the size of that big hole. And it's starting to look like what it would look like from the, from the bank. This is the actual sun coming down here. You can't see the sun, but you can see that the, this is too light because it was during an actual sunset. But again, this is the end of the equal day night in uh, September on the 26th, the beginning of the equal day night, 17th of March. The season focus at Stonehenge for the equal day night sunset starts in March, ends in September. That's the summer, the opposite of the winter focus in Alberta. By the way, their temple is 4,400 years old, ours is 5,200 years Well, the calendar, 4,400 years old, our calendar is 5,200, so ours is actually 800 years older than theirs. That was the sunset line. This is the equal day-night sunrise line. From the bank, through a narrow gap across the Stonehenge structure, to New King Barrow 28. This is standing inside the circle, looking along that line, just to show you the six, how the six barrows on the New King Barrow Ridge look from the circle itself. And we'll wind up focusing on that one. This is an actual sunrise. The sun on the 25th of September in 2002 appeared here. That's the sun there, but you extrapolate along the slope to where the first flash was, it was here. And the, the sunrise first flash depends on the elevation of the horizon. So these distances on our flat horizon in Alberta, the distances were exactly the same. This distance, and when you're going upslope, the distance gets increased. So this is the beginning of the equal day night for the sunrise and the end of the equal day night for the sunset. This is just above the peak of barrel 28. shows you the same information with September and March. It marks the end of it in September and the beginning of the equal day night in March. So it's the same as the set. It starts in March, ends in September. That focuses on the summer. How did they know that over here they focused on the winter and over there they focused on the summer? They just didn't want it. It's like kids want to separate themselves from their parents to show that they're individuals and so they disagree with a lot of the stuff their parents say. The same thing with the people who built these temples. Anyway, so if you're standing outside the ring looking through a narrow slot, this is the end in September, the beginning of March, this is the peak of New King Barrow 28. Now if you go a considerable distance away to see how narrow that gap looks, this is the gap and this is, this is the horizon. So it's quite fine, but about a tenth of a degree. Just to give you an idea of the whole Stonehenge calendar as viewed through cracks across the whole Stonehenge structure, This is the equal day-night sunrise. This is the equal day-night set. It's the same gap over here, but they straddle this stone. Some of these stones are fallen, but the 
the stones are accurately placed, and so just by turning the, the diagram around, you can estimate the positions of the stones as when they all stood up. That's what these black things are, where they used to be. The summer sunrise that I showed you there, this is high up, four meters above the ground, or five. The winter salsa sunset is along the same gaps. This is the narrow gap between the great trilithon two rocks. And this is the summer salsa sunset, the winter salsa sunrise, and that goes through, they actually go through this chipped, this big V that's been carved out of this big rock, but there is an altar stone. The, the books on Stonehenge say that that altar stone has been shifted, it should be perpendicular to this line. It's off, it's only 80 degrees instead of 90 degrees, but it's exactly in the direction of the winter sunset, uh, sunrise and the summer sunset. The altar stone was intentionally put at that angle to correspond to the solstice uh, rise in the summer, in the, in the winter and set in the summer. The end of this own hands camera. Uh,